Oh, hi, Larry. What, pray tell, is this all about? Funny you should ask. Last night, I was watching the Jean-Claude Van Damme movie, and it was awesome. Oh, let me guess. You found something you want to test from it, didn't you? This is why we get along so well. I feel like you can read my mind. How was that? That was great. Next time, let's make it a bit bigger. Watch this, Xanoff. Oh, yeah. On this episode of Hollywood Weapons, we're testing hard target. And hard target, too. We're going to put Hollywood to the test. This is Hollywood Weapons. Yeah, that was bigger. There are a few things in this world better than a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie. And in this one, Van Damme plays a down and out drifter hired by a woman to find her missing father. Directed by John Woo, Hard Target is full of action with a capital A, hard stairs, explosions, and slow-mo. Oh, yes, so much slow-mo. <laughs> Better yet, there's several things we can test from it, as well as its non-Van Damme sequel, Hard Target 2. And now it's time for Terry's Knucklehead Science. Are you OK? Yeah, why? Nothing. All right, so in this scene, Van Damme gets into a gunfight. The bad guy pulls out a shotgun, starts firing away. Van Damme takes cover behind a car door and remains unscathed. I've seen that in lots of movies, too. That's a good one. Indeed. Next, our bad guys pay their minion a visit. When he answers the door and looks through the people, he gets blasted. I'm never looking through one of those things again. Next. Our main bad guy is played by the incredibly talented Lance Henriksen, and this dude is everything you want in a villain. Mean, ruthless, and like most evil bosses, has a signature weapon all his own. So in this scene, he's trying to do a drive-by and shoots at Van Damme as he's hiding behind a highway barrel. Is that it? Nope. Larry's going to be here tomorrow. I got an idea. How about another boom? Let's go. My man. Larry, you ready to have some fun? Oh, can I go home now? <laughs> Dude, this is going to be better than a gas station hot dog. I, I would not know about that. You're missing out. I'll take your word for it. In any case, in this scene that we're testing, Jean-Claude Van Damme hides behind a car door to take cover from bad guys. Of course, the window, as you can see, is up. That's important, because if the window's down, it could actually increase the chance of success. Absolutely. And our bad guy, of course, is shooting a Mossberg 590 shotgun in 12-gauge double odd buck. Well, that packs a punch. I know it that. Does. You think he's going to get through this door? I think we got a really good chance with the window up of it getting through. But of course, we have to test, test it. it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, let's get our All right. eyes and ears on. Yeah, these are loud. Here's your Mossberg 590, just like in the show. One shot, double out buck into the door. Okay, weapons clear. Let's go down and take a look. Oh, no. Oh, wow. Done. Wir sagen in Deutschland, tot. Finished. Yeah, and you'll notice it actually came through the armrest, which is actually like the thickest part. Yeah. We have at least one pellet that Exited. came all the way through, and everything else is still in him. So as we saw in the movie, that's a failed test, because he'd have got chewed up. For sure. Now, would it be different if the window was down? Well, for sure it'll be different, but how different, we'd have to actually test. And for that to be fair test, you'd need a second door, of course. I brought two, just in case. Terry Shepard, coming prepared. I'm speechless. 
Same test as before, same 12 gauge double aught buck, same shotgun, but this time the window is rolled down. downrange and see what we got. Oh, no, another bad, another bad day, bro. Yeah. He ate that. He ate a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, not only pellets. If you notice, he's getting peppered there by shrapnel from the door as well. Total fail. Even with the window down at that range with that weapon system, you're done. You might get lucky if the angle was a little bit different, yep. where maybe you hit on the door. A couple pellets got sent a different but direction. But at that close of a range, like you said, it is punching all the way through. Well, that was awesome. And I got to say, I'm looking forward to the next test. What's up? Well, good. I've got it set up right over here. All right. In this scene, our bad guy presses his gun right up against the peephole and fires when the guy on the other side looks through. After this test, you might not want to answer the knock at the door anymore. All right, Lars. So I noticed in the scene from the movie that the bad guy, played by one of my favorites, Arnold Voslo, is using a Ruger Mark I integrally suppressed. Yeah, and that's a little bit of movie magic there. This is a 1993 movie. They weren't really doing that with Ruger Mark I's at the time. You can even see the seam where the armor sleeved yeah. something up over it. Well, I have a feeling you have a solution. Well, all of the Ruger standard Mark series shoot 22 long rifle. And? And I just happen to have a Mark II integrally suppressed here for you to use. My man. OK. Now, you can see what we've got for you here, Terry. We've built kind of a simulated door. It's the same thickness as a regulation door. The peephole's going in for the same depth. Right. We have a fully loaded simulation of a human skull behind it, gel with bone structure and everything. All right, so what are we shooting? Well, obviously, we have our Ruger Mark II <laughs> integrally suppressed. And we're shooting subsonic ammunition in it, which if you were a real assassin, That's right. you would be doing. So this is actually giving you about 710 feet per second. A little bit slower. Right. But, but that's what he would want to use. We're going to assume that that's what he was using since he was such a pro. Makes sense. So guns on safe. You have one round in the chamber. Go ahead and get a good, if you want to call it, sight picture. OK, you're good to go right there. So fire when ready. Knock, knock. Who's there? A bullet. We're testing the movie Hard Target, and I'm getting ready to shoot through a peephole. You're welcome. Guns on safe. You have one round in the chamber. Go ahead and get a good, if you want to call it, sight picture. OK, you're good to go right there. So fire when ready. so quiet, isn't it? It's at, well, that's the idea of the subsonic ammunition. And you'll notice that the bolt didn't even lock back. Right. Because when it's such low pressure on these rounds, it's, not, it's not cycling. You actually cycle it by hand. But let's go oh. take a look and see what we got. Oh. <laughs> right through the eye and into the back of the orbital. Plane. Yeah, that's that's pretty nasty. 22 caliber hole all the way through. Not a good day for him. Wildly successful test. Yep. I mean, the, the bullet went through the glass, the tube, and into his eye. Just like in the movie. The orbital bones behind the socket are, they're, they're paper thin, so that guy is done. For sure. I kind of thought it would have gone in a bit deeper, though. Really? Yeah. Well, you know, in the 1996 movie Fled, they kind of upped the game a little bit. It's the same kind of scene, except they use a Beretta 9 millimeter. You say what I think you're saying? I think I am. <laughs> I'll be right back. I'll be here, man. Hey, man. Hey, Lottie. Oh, my gosh, you won't believe what happened. What happened, bud? Someone stole the bus right on my car. Can you believe it? What kind of world are we living in? Who would do such a thing? I got to go call a tow truck. Got a bigger gun there, Larry. I do have a bigger gun here this time. 
This, of course, is the 92 Beretta in 9mm, just like they used in the movie Fled. We have our Osprey silencer on it, and we'll see what happens. I'm in. Okay, fire one ready. <laughs> oh my. Oh, don't answer the door. Ooh. And you notice there is it's not even just the, the bullet that we fired, it actually took all of the peephole and pushed it through the eye socket. And if you look too, you see the skull fracture at the skull top. Skull fracture, and blood all the way back to the spinal yeah. column. So there's a nine mil bullet in that guy's head. He's done two wildly successful tests. Wildly test. successful tests, just like in each one of those movies. So if you're in those movies, I wouldn't answer the door. I'm not gonna do it anymore. By the way, how are your wrists? Fine. Why? You'll see. <clears throat> I feel like I should be afraid. Yeah, I'm afraid. Ah, uh, I think I know what you meant by that question. Yeah, are you worried yet? <laughs> no. You should be. Yeah, I should be. What okay, so Jean-Claude, dives behind a traffic barrel like that, thinking that it's... Cover? Cover. <laughs> um, I don't know that it's gonna be cover, but I think probably not. So in the film, of course, our villain is shooting a 4570 round, usually out of a rifle. He, of course, does it out of a handgun. And he does it one-handed and with no sights. Sure, I'm up for this. You up for this? Yeah, let's, let's do get it. Ready. All right. Okay, you have one round, that's the safety. Click to the left. And fire when ready. Hit it dead center. <laughs> wow. Really good shot. <laughs> and clearly, I don't think there's much of a surprise here, but as men of science, we still have, we have to, to test We have it. to test. I mean, a road barrel's not going to give cover. And, the, and it didn't fly up in the air. Good Hollywood effect. Absolutely. You can see there's zero deviation. Oh, man. I mean, this, what we shot right now was a 405 grain bullet, mm -hmm. right? It's not going to get stopped by a plastic barrel. So, I mean, from what we saw in the film, I love Jean-Claude. I'm glad yep. he survived, but that's a failed test. That road barrel's not going to save you. Totally failed. I think we knew that, but again, we had to test. Yeah, well, listen, it's a fun gun to shoot. I just don't feel like doing it again. We have to do it at least one more time because we have another test with that same gun. Cool. Really cool. All right, this next scene is from Hard Target 2, starring Scott Atkins, one of my favorite action stars. And it's near the end, when he's going mano a mano with the hand cannon toting bad guy. Atkins uses a body to protect himself from the 4570 round, and we want to see if that's really going to work. All right, Larry, so I was thinking, this kind of reminds me of when we tested Quigley Down Under, where, I might remind you, I did shoot through two bad guys at 820 yards. Yeah, very similar, of course. There you were shooting a 45 110 This is a 45 70 uh, There you were shooting a rifle. This is a pistol, right? And uh, you, you have to admit, you did have some good instruction. Yeah, let's not cloud the audience's minds with facts and details. OK, well, this test, of course, is the common movie trope of picking up a bad guy and holding him in front of All you as time. a shield. Yeah. Gets riddled with bullets, but none of them make it through to hit the, the good guy. So let's go ahead, one shot, and see what happens. Yep. OK, weapons on safe. One round. Testing stuff from the Don Claude Van Damme movie, Hard Target. By the way, I look just as good in slow motion. Mm. 
Grizzly. Oh boy. Yeah, well, kind of put it where I wanted, right by his sternum. Did it go through? And you went through bones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there is an exit wound here. How about the back? And there is an entry wound that right, right, right there. there. And there's something in there. Pull it, pull it, pull it. There's definitely something in there. I didn't know you were a trauma surgeon, Larry. You don't know a lot of things <laughs> about me. I didn't know, man. Oh, look at this. So this, that's the that's jacket. So the jacket actually traveled further through the second guy. So the jacket strips off. Yep. But that's the actual bullet. That is nasty. Well, listen, fail test. Scott Atkins is one of my favorite action heroes, but this would not have saved him. This bullet no, is going to crush not. both of you. And I guess this is probably why you hunt Kate Buffalo with this? Absolutely. This last test is from the first hard target. Wilford Brimley plays Van Damme's moonshining uncle, and he sets a trap for the bad guys when they come looking for his nephew. Outside on a table, he has a lit kerosene lamp next to a fuse, which leads to some dynamite. When the bad guys get close, Brimley shoots an arrow at the lamp, breaking it, starting a fire, igniting the fuse, and boom. Come on, Terry, we're burning daylight here. I'm coming. Is all that really necessary? Why don't you ask Jean-Claude, buddy? Ah, never mind. OK, in this scene that we're testing, Wilford Brimley has a surprise for some bad guys, right? And he activates it by shooting a bow and arrow at this lamp. Yep. It breaks the lamp and spills the oil. Yes. The oil ignites. Yep. That ignites some gunpowder that just happens to be on the table. Indeed. If the same arrow actually knocks over some of his moonshine, yeah. and all that ignites the fuse that then blows up his house. That is the Cajun way. Yes. All right, how far are we going to do this from? You know, in the movie, you really can't tell what the distance is. We're going to do it from 25 yards. So recurved, not a compound. I'll do my best. Yeah, I, I think you're going to need to do a little bit better than that this time. Come on, Larry. I'm the VP of the MIH Society. Make it happen. All right, what do we got? OK, well, as you've told me so many times, Shap likes the boom. Yes, he does. So let's give this a shot and see what happens. Fair enough. Hang with it's it. It's going. It's going. It's a caged IED. It's got to build. It's got to build. It's what we call a slow burn. That's right. They're always worth it. So we've hit the lamp. Hit we've the lamp. We've got the powder going off. Yep. We've got a little bit of the moonshine burning. The bad guys really don't know what they're in for yet. Yeah, they're still kind of scratching their head going, what is all this about? What the about? heck just happened? Clearly have the fuse on fire at this point. So it's slowly creeping towards his house, right? That's it's, right. It's rigged with dynamite for the big surprise. <laughs> that was worth it. It definitely was. That was worth and it. I think it clearly proved that you, sir, are no Wilford Brimley. <laughs> Nobody is. Nobody ever will be. He was a national treasure, no longer with us, sadly. But, sadly. Um, that was fun to do. Fail test like we saw in the movie, but totally worth doing. Yeah. It didn't work exactly the way Wilford Brimley did it, but again, He's Wilford Brimley. He's Wilford Brimley. I don't know Wilford Brimley. Exactly. That's a great test, man. Great day. Well, there you have it. Hard target one and two put to the test. I'd like to thank Larry and the team for making it fun and safe. As always, what did we learn today? A car door isn't good cover from a shotgun blast. Think twice before you look through that peephole because you can shoot through it. A road barrel is better used as a road barrel. A body is not good cover from a 45-70 round. 
And like Larry said, I'm no Wilford Brimley. So if you're watching a TV show or a movie and you think to yourself, can you really do that? Reach out to us. Maybe we'll make that happen. I've always been a huge fan of Jean-Claude Van Damme, and I think this quote explains why. He says, I've had my ups and downs, my fair share of bumpy roads and heavy winds, and that's what's made me what I am today. There's a lesson for all of us. Keep kicking. <laughs>